We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I invite the church to stand up at this moment. We're going to read the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 81. 81 from verse 1 to 3. Psalms 81 from verse 1 to th verse 3. Amen is here in the projection. It says the following. Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout to, to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the lute. Blow the trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for the fellowship that we have. We ask that in your word we may once again bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Sing joyfully to the Lord. The psalm begins like that. And the word says that this is the desire of the Lord from the day He created heaven and earth, the sea and everything that is in it. And I was created for the praise and adoration and for the glorification of His name. But here the Lord speaks with His people. He is speaking with His people. And the order of the Lord for His people is the following. Sing joyfully to the Lord. In the book of Psalms, we are going to see many references regarding this. When David said, I rejoice when they told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And the expression here, singing, 
joyfully to the Lord. He is to serve the Lord with joy. He is to present yourself before the Lord with a praise and adoration, with songs and gratitude in our hearts. So this is actually a desire that needs to exist in the life of every living creature to express their love, their recognition, their gratitude for all the benefits that God has done for our lives. What am I going to give to the Lord for all the benefits He has done for me? I will take the cup of salvation and we will call Him. And I'm going to sing songs in the name of the Lord. And, and the psalm here that was written for Israel, they have all the reasons to praise, to glorify the name of the Lord. As we, when we read here below in the psalm, we see the things that God has done for Israel. And the word says that the Lord took Israel, took the load out of the shoulders of Israel, the weight, take them out of slavery. Their hands were uh, on working on a daily basis, a heavy load, and they had, uh, they had no rest was a people that when they pleaded to the Lord, the Lord heard them. And God paid attention, paid great attention to them. And when he comes to Moses, the dialogue between God and Moses, God says, I have seen with great attention, paying great attention to the struggle of the, my people. And therefore, I came down to deliver them. And that's why the expression of singing joyfully to the Lord because the Lord delivered them. The Lord came down to deliver them, to rescue them, to save the Jewish people, to take them out, take men out of a life of slavery. The man that was under the yoke of sin, of a judgment, to take his hand out of the basket or, or of a work that would lead men to death because the wage of sin is death. So then God came to give a free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's where we need to sing joyfully to the Lord. And he says, He is our fortress. Why does he say that we? He is our fortress? Because He is our stronghold. He is, he is our safe shelter, our hiding place. He is our help. I rise my eyes to the mounts where the help is going to come from. The help is going to come from this God, the God who is the creator of heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why this God has the desire to listen to our song and our praise and our adoration, our expression of gratitude for all the benefits that He has provided to our lives. And more than that, He says, Celebrate to the God, celebrate the God of Jacob. First, he says that we need to sing joyfully, and now he says that we need to celebrate. Celebration is a pact, is a covenant, is an agreement. It's something that is more solemn, more sophisticated. It's something of greater worth when we celebrate the the wedding of the Lamb, celebrating the marriage of a son is a, a, a more special moment. So he he's speaking about something that is more special. It is the celebration of the God of Jacob. Why the, the God of Jacob? Who Jacob was? Jacob was a man that had no right to the inheritance, had no right of being the firstborn. He was the one who was outside of the plan, uh, uh, the, the project of God, but he was reached by God not through his works, because the name Jacob already condemned him, the usurper, but because of the favor and mercy of God that is the cause that man is not consumed. And the Lord says, I love Jacob. And so the one who was reached by the love of God, and here is speaking about my brother and sister, he's speaking 
to each one of us because none of us had the right of being the firstborn. No one had the right to the inheritance. We were all excluded from the from the project, project and the plan of God. But because of God's love to our lives, we have been included to this project. That's why the celebration, because there was a covenant, there was an agreement between God and and, and man when God sent His Son Jesus to come to this world and to die, so that through His blood we would be purchased. So now we would be participant of His plan and His project of eternity. That's why the celebration, this commemoration for this covenant, this alliance, this agreement between God and to mine and to our lives through this alliance, which is the love of God that was poured out on the cross of Calvary, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And then he says the following, take the harp. I'm going to present myself before the Lord. I need to bring something. And he said, take the harp. If you look, you knew, if you go to Google, you will find two references. It's, it speaks about, about uh, an instrument, but the Jewish harp, you know what it is? The harp of the Jewish people was the book of Psalms. So here, since it was written by the Jewish people, it is the pleasant harp. They are making reference of the book of Psalms. So may our lives be a book of Psalms, maybe a song of praise, an adoration, a glorification to this God of Jacob, the God creator of heaven and earth, the God that has rescued you, the God that saved you. Take the harp, bring the lute. The lute, the lute is an instrument that is made out of a skin, the skin of an animal, the the skin of a lamb. And why take the the lute? The lute. The lute is related to the sacrifice of Jesus. If man does not take possession of the sacrifice of Jesus, if man does not recognize that the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world, it took the sin out of my life. If they do not recognize, um, he is not going to present before the Lord with gratitude. So take the load is recognize the sacrifice, the high price that was paid on the cross of Calvary for mine, for yours, and for our lives. Because through this sacrifice that came with this skin, animal skin, we could now present ourselves before the Lord and express all our praise and our adoration. It is the ropes of praise. It says more, the pleasant harp. So when you speak about David, it, he he knew how to... So the harp speaks uh, about the Lord. David has the word of the Lord hidden in his heart as a way of gratitude, of praise. Sometimes people think that the Word of God is something that is unpleasant, heavy. No, my brethren. The Word of God is wonderful. It is a light to my feet and lamp for my path. The Word of the Lord guides us, instructs us, teaches us, point out a path reveal the plan, the project of God for our lives. That's why it is uh, pleasant. And Jesus speaks about this. My yoke is uh, pleasant. My weight is light. So the word of the Lord. So then it was an instrument that Alawud is an instrument of just three chords. It speaks about the triune God. The God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that all those things needed to be present in the life of man so that man would be singing with joyfulness, so that they could celebrate the God of Jacob, so that they may sound the trumpet. So it speaks about a preparation and the people needed to have in order to sound the trumpet. A preparation 
or a position which the people needed to be in order to be. So when the sound of the trumpet was made, they would please their God, the God that rescued them, the God that saved them, the God that delivered them, the God of Jacob, that was able to reach us through his love, through his grace, through his favor, and through his mercy. So sound the trumpet. Why? Because the trumpet is present in every festivity and every celebration in Israel. The trumpet is a, is a warning, is a, an awakening. That's why you need to sound the trumpet. It speaks about a special feast. It speaks about a special moment in which they were living, that the church will be living. And the feast is feasts of the new moon. In the Jewish calendar is different than ours. We have a month with 29 days and 28 in February, depending on the leap year. There are months with 30 days and months with 31 days. But the Jewish calendar is uh, is a lunar calendar. It has four weeks of seven days. It's 28 days. So the beginning of each month corresponds to the first day of the new moon. And this is a statute, as an ordinance that God gave to Moses. So the first time the tabernacle was built up and, and the desert was on this day, the day of the new moon. That's why there is a feast, the feast of the new moon. The tabernacle was assembled for the first time. So do the brethren understand this? What does it mean? So in the day of the new moon, the tabernacle, the church of the Lord will be raptured. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. It was on this day. The feast of the new moon was the first day of the month. It was a, there was a statute so that every first day of the year it was necessary to perform this celebration. And it was, it was in this way that the people needed to be prepared for this feast, for this special solemn moment. The Bible says, sound the trumpet in, at the time of the new moon. But in the time of Moses, in which day is the new moon? How could he have known the day and the time in which the new moon would be up in the sky? And the word of the Lord says that God tells Moses and points out to him the moment in which the moon would show up on the sky and the new moon it appears on a darker night in a moment of greater darkness and when the moon showed up it would have it had a, like a, a measurement and from that measurement uh, the feast of the new moon would begin and God gave this information to Moses as a statute as a, as a law to the Jewish people and Moses was uh, very concerned with this. So then he thought, well, the next month, the Lord had revealed to me, but well, no, now the Lord has revealed to me, but how about the next month? And how about the first day of the following months, or of the following years? How am I going to be able to know exactly when to sound the trumpet to begin the feast of the new moon? In the word of the Lord, my brethren, says that Moses... He would set aside two men. And when the day was coming close to the beginning of the new moon, those men they were on the field, field ready, looking to the sky. And when they could measure exactly the size of the moon, according to what the Lord has explained to them, they would go to the temple where the priests, the high priests were, the men of law, the servant of God that would take care of the spiritual life of Israel, and they would say, the new moon has arisen. And then from that moment forward, two things would take place. The torches were, would, were lit and the trumpets were sounded. And then it would begin the feast of the new moon. 
which was a, a solemn celebration. It was a day of sacrifice, it was a day of atonement for sin, it was a day of confession of sin. It was a day also of praise and adoration, it was a day to come up to the house of the Lord, it was a day to visit the prophet, it was also a day of glorification, a special day. It was a solemn feast. And sometimes you speak about a solemn feast and what is that? What does it mean? What is a solemn celebration? Let me give you an example so that the brethren would understand. We have every, day, every year we have the Feast of the Oscars. So the Feast of the Oscars is a solemn celebration because it is a special moment for the industry that is involved with movies, with those things. So the world stops to watch this and you see people entering in that environment with you know, very special dresses. Everybody is worried about their own appearance and their clothing and the way they dress up, the way they walk, their shoes. They take care of the min smallest details because it is some uh, feast is very formal. You cannot get there like in a reckless way because that is a special moment for them. So the feast of the new moon was also a, a solemn feast. It was a special feast where the people would put their best garments. And what is our best garments? Is the garments that the Lord has given us? Is the garments of salvation? Is a gratitude to God for all the benefits and the retribution for everything that He has done for our lives? So the feast of the new moon was a moment there in which the sacrifice was made. The Holocaust was the the moment in which the people recognized through their actions and that through their own works they would not be saved but they needed a substitute because without shed of blood there is no remission of sin that's why they have that celebration the celebration of salvation for us through Christ Jesus it was a moment that would start a new cycle a new period a new time we we'll live in this moment the moment of the darkest night the moment in which at any moment this solemn feast will take place which is the celebration is the return of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and a new light will go up for us a new cycle a new time for the church that's why the Lord say sound the trumpet on the new moon and he said there is a scheduled time my brother and sister the time is already scheduled there is already a day and, and an hour we don't know this day or this hour but God has already determined in his eternity the day and the hour and in the time of Moses since we don't know the day and the hour what do we need to do at this moment of darkest night you need to be vigilant They were there in the vigil of the night waiting for the moon to rise up so that the sound of the trumpet would be given and the feast would take place. And we live in this moment. The moment in which you are vigilant, that's what the Bible says. Have your waist girded, dressed up, wet up in a, an appropriate way, and light up your lamps. So this is a moment in which the church is living. The moment of at waste and lamps lit because at any moment the celebration is going to take place and on those days the days of this feast when the trumpet was sounded and it, this event was proclaimed the people of Jerusalem the people of Israel at that moment where when the torches were lit no one would do any business no one would do any business they would stop everything the entire commerce it would stop you know why because now it was a moment was not a moment of buying and selling the moment was not to negotiate the moment there was to come to the house of the Lord to praise the Lord to participate in the feast because the feast was more important than any anything else and we're living this moment my brethren it's not a moment for us to negotiate our faith 
to negotiate our salvation. Where it's not a moment for us to be concerned with the things of this life. Because Jesus is coming. Well, even this darkest night, at any moment, the Bible says, the new trumpet will be, uh, the fourth trumpet will sound on the twink of a night, like the, the passage that she said in the Sunday school this morning. When you blink your eye, the light has the speed of light. In the speed of light, it would go around the earth seven times. When you blink your eye, the light would go around the earth for seven times. So it has a prophetic meaning. Who is the light? The light is Jesus. In the twink of the light of of the eye, the project of God, the revelation of Christ Jesus would rapture his people, his church on every corner of the earth. So this is a moment for us. It's not a moment for us to be unaware because the trumpet will sound and the feast will, will begin. And the feast, my brother and sister, the feast of Jerusalem was like that. When they sounded the trumpet, the torch were lit, the people would gather inside of Jerusalem and would only participate of the feast, uh, the ones who, because the, the, the gates of Jerusalem would be closed and only participated on the feast, the ones who were in Jerusalem. My brother, do you want to participate on the feast of the wedding of the Lamb? Go through the gates of Jerusalem. Accept the plan and project of God today still in your life because after the gate, the door is closed. The Bible says that everything that I open, nobody closes, but everything that I close, nobody opens. So once the door is closed, it doesn't matter if you want to knock and say, open, open to us, there will be no solution. There is no second chance. The hour is now, the moment is this one in which we are living. Sound the trumpet, thus says the word of the Lord. On the Feast of the New Moon, at the Full Moon, on our Solemn Feast Day. So the Lord has scheduled a moment for, He's not a, a celebration from Him, because He's already in eternity. It's an event for us, for me, for you, for each one of us. So it is a, an event for us. This is God's desire, is a moment for us. We desire to enter into this solemn feast, and it is the wedding of the Lamb, the feast in heaven, is a feast in eternity. Amen. Uh, the Lord gave a spiritual gift where a man would come today, a businessman, he came with a briefcase. No one has a briefcase here, so you need to understand this spiritually. So he brought with himself, his, since he's a businessman, he's concerned with his finances. With his, with his money, with his um, earnings. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the Feast of the New Moon, nobody, nobody should take care, uh, work with, uh, with any finance or the business would all stop. When you enter into the Feast of the Wedding of the Lamb, you don't have to worry about money anymore. In heaven, we're not going to have any of it. The, the place there, everything there is much better. So don't worry about these things with your finances, with your investments, with the future, with documents. But the Lord said something that is interesting. Jesus says the following, seek the Lord, seek first the Lord and all his things and everything else will be added unto you. Seek the Lord and his kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. The God of Jacob. Jacob had a special characteristic. He had no right to anything. He had no inheritance because he was not the firstborn, but he never gave up. He didn't trust on the law. He trusted on the grace of God. And because of grace, he was saved. Because of grace, he received inheritance. Because of grace, he was counted a number as the Savior. Because of grace, his name is written in the Book of Life. And by grace, the Lord wants to place your name in the book of life. Don't worry about those things, those earthly things. God will take care of them. The Bible says, I never saw a righteous um, 
begging bread. But get ready for this moment, for this feast. The trumpets are being sounded. The torches are being lit. The pouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is being poured out upon the entire earth. And the last day, we're going to pour out of my spirit to, over the entire earth. And the Lord says this, and we believe in the word of the Lord. And this torch of fire means that these people are being reached and visited, baptized with the Holy Spirit. They are being prepared for this event, for this feast. And throughout the service and the vision, the Lord will come to this man, this businessman, and God will show to this man a new project. And this is the product that is being presented here tonight, an eternal project. Not for this life, but is a project for the entire eternity through Christ Jesus. So sound the trumpet on the Feast of the New Moon. And that's what the faithful church is doing right now, at this moment, today, in this place, where sounded the new trump th this trumpet so that each one of us, so that it might be a sign an awakening, uh, a message that Jesus is returning at, at any moment. In the twinkle of an eye, the church will celebrate with the Lord in His eternity. And the desire of the Lord is that you participate, that we participate, each one of us may participate of this event, of this solemn feast in heaven with God, in the eternity of God. Amen. Lord to God, the church will stand up. We praise your Father. We thank you. We're thankful for this moment, for the celebration and fellowship, for this solemn feast, for the preparation that you have given us, Lord, for the alerts, the signs that you have given to us at this moment, preparing us to participate, Lord, on this wonderful feast, to enter into the gates of your eternity, Lord. We thank you, glorify you, because it's your love and your grace through our Savior Jesus Christ is the sacrifice, Lord, of Him on the cross of Calvary has given us 
this opportunity to participate, Lord, on this solemn moment. We praise you, glorify your name, because we recognize the sacrifice of your Son. And Lord, more than that, we glorify you for the demonstration of your great love towards our lives. We want to glorify your name, your, your eternity, for all the blessings and benefits, for your goodness towards our lives. And we plead to you, Lord, that you may receive the service and adoration to you as an offering, a sweet smell that may come to your nostrils, Lord. Lord, already perfected by your Holy Spirit, take us in peace to our homes. Give us a week of uh, deliverance and, and victories and experiences with you. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank already you, my brother and sister, you who are here with, uh, with us tonight. And this coming Sunday at 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning, you're going to have a special event here in this church and also in the church in Hollandale and also in Orlando and all our church of our denomination here in the United States, in Canada, in Brazil, and in the rest of the world. It is a day of sounding the trumpet. It's a day of alert. It's a, a moment of a, a day of awakening. It's a day of clarification to the people, to the world, of the prophetic moment that the church of the Lord is living, that you, you, my brother and sister, you're living. You're living the moment of the end. We don't know the day or the hour, but the Lord has already scheduled in eternity a moment, a day and an hour. And this day is about to arrive. This, this day is about to take place. The sign of the end are being fulfilled in this entire generation and all of the earth. Every being, everyone is being alerted for this moment so that nobody will be caught by surprise. And you are invited. And it's, uh, you are our special guest to participate with us this coming Sunday at 8.30 in the morning. If you have relatives in Brazil, then in Brazil is going to be at 10.30 in the morning because of the time zone and summertime and in other parts of the world because of time zone is going to be a, a little different but in brazil the ones who are unable to go to the church and have access to the church it will be also broadcasted through a tv channel there at 8, 11 o'clock in the morning and for you my brother and sister we want to encourage you to be here with us in this moment of solemn feast and celebration you are, have already been invited, you, your family, your uh, friends, and your co-workers, everyone can participate with us. If you need a prayer for your life or a clarification of what was said, we are here at your disposal. And I also would like to remember, remind you that there, we have services on every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 o'clock and Saturday and Sunday at 7.30 in the evening. And to all, the peace of the Lord. And this coming week, and, your, and the following week, you also have another rebroadcast of the event. But the event will take place live this coming Sunday. If you need a prayer or a clarification, just raise your hand and the brethren are going to give you the proper assistance. There it is, on the back. On the left bench, on the left side. <laughs> 